Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the automatic time integration algorithm to model the single edged notch sample. In this tutorial, I will show you how to identify unstable propagation with this algorithm and how to obtain a relatively good precision for the maximum reaction force. We will start with the files already generated in the second tutorial. So you can download all the necessary data from this link, or you can go to my web page and, and do the tutorial first. However, first we need to understand what is the second Sagard algorithm for the phase field solution. Basically, we decouple the two problems, the mechanical problem from the crack topology, and we introduce a history field. This history field contains the maximum mechanical elastic energy. Our idea was to actually limit the increment of this energy, thus we defined a maximum history increment in a certain sense. This was defined based on the homogeneous solution, which is multiplied by a scalar variable. By default, this is 0.5, so 50%. If the maximum history increment which is allowed is greater than the, the actual value in the actual newton Rebsum step, then the increment is accepted and a larger value is suggested for the, the next Time, test, time step. However, if this value is smaller, then the increment is restarted with a, a smaller time step value. However, when an unstable propagation is reached, we will have a, a negative demanded uh, time step, therefore we limit it to 10 on the power minus 9, which is basically around the precision of the Abacus calculation. After opening the graphical user interface of Abacus, let's open a database. Make sure that your work directory is set correctly, that the old CAE file is in the same directory. Open the old file from the second tutorial, dismiss this window. In order to make this work with the new generation script, we need to change a few things. Let's go to property module. We need to rename the set which was created for the first part. Let's rename it. In order to identify the, the UEL sets in the MATLAB script, the script searches for the prefix UEL in the set name. After changing this, let's click OK. However, now the whole thing turned gray, which means that it lost the, 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 the set. That's what it is set here. Let's redefine this set based on the new name which will be the section predefined. Let's dismiss this window. The second thing which we would need to do is to add more solution dependent variables. Let's set this to 24. And finally, we would need to update the, the instance. However, still, this uses the steps defined in the, the first tutorial. Therefore, to be able to compare the two, let's copy this model. Let's name it auto. In the auto module, let's go to steps. Let's delete the second step because we will not need it. The time period can be one. And the increment should be changed to automatic. Let's set it to 500. The initial can be 0 0.01. 
with a minimum increment of minus 12. This number should be smaller than the, the smallest time increment defined in the UEL. Uh, the maximum can still be one. It doesn't matter. Let's click OK, dismiss this window and go to jobs. Open the job manager. Uh, if you did your simulations uh, for the second tutorial just now, then this is a good, uh, good path for the file. I did not, so I have to delete this and recreate the model from, from scratch. Let's create another model, which is based on the auto. Let's name it single crack. Auto, continue, okay, and now we can write both input files. In MATLAB, we can simply open the test script, which already contains all the relevant mechanical parameters which we need for this model, the elastic properties and the fracture properties. Don't worry about the plastic and dynamic part, uh, this will not be used in the actual calculation. What is important is to set the elastic switch variable to zero to be able to directly compare the new results to the old ones. After running this script, both files appear for the, the fixed increment and for the, the automatic time incrementation algorithm as well. Now we can go back to Abacus to run the simulations. In Abacus, we need to create two jobs based on input files. The first one is going to be the fixed incrementation as we had the Fortran file similarly to the second tutorial. And the second one will going to be the, the automatic scheme continue and this uses actually the very same uh, Fortran file. In the file, it can distinguish between the two integration schemes asked for. Let's submit both jobs. In a few minutes, the two calculations are finished. The fixed incrementation scheme has been completed. However, the automatic one was aborted due to the fact that it identified the, the unstable propagation, thus it reduced the time increment to the minimum value with which the simulation, the total simulation time could not be completed. However, we can see that this unstable propagation was reached in, in 30 increments, which is extremely fast. Let's look at the results, how the two reaction force compare. We opened the automatic integration scheme. We go to field output. We choose unique models, the reaction force in the second direction, thus in Y direction. We choose the node set reaction point. Let's plot. The result. Dismiss this window. Let's save this data. Let's rename it to auto. Now let's go back, open the fixed incrementation scheme. Similarly, ask for field outputs the reaction force in the second direction in a unique, on a unique model, node sets and the reference point. Let's plot it. Dismiss the window. Let's save it again. Let's rename it to fixed. Let's add the fixed one to the automatic one, and we can see that we have almost the same precision uh, in maximum reaction force. However, we got rid 
of this this vegetation in in the crack face field. So you were able to identify precisely where the, the unstable propagation started. We can also look at when does this happen. Let's choose only the UMAT elements. Let's look at the face field value and let's go back, 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 back to the point when it starts to propagate does the face field reaches one we can see that this happens in the fixed case after 150 uh, simulation steps if you go to the automatic scheme let's do the same look at the face field simulations we can see that it happens much 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 earlier after 50 so we basically reduced the 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 number of iterations needed to the third if we open the fortran script for the the automatic time integration we can scroll down and we can modify our eta value which controls the the maximum time integration if we want to we can reuse it by reducing this value we will increase the number of iterations needed to complete the the simulation however it will be much more precise and it will, the results will be much closer to the coupled scheme to summarize this tutorial we demonstrated how to use the automatic time integration algorithm to solve the single edged notched sample we showed how the, the the limitation in the history field can affect the results also if you play with eta value you can see that by reusing this scalar we can quickly obtain a, a quite good convergence to to the value which is calculated with the the, the coupled the fully coupled scheme this automatic scheme has a lot of advantages we need much less iteration at least for the same precision we can obtain better precision however we need more more iterations we do not need to to find out which kind of time step is good for us the algorithm will choose it automatically for 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 the user and with this algorithm we can identify precisely where the unstable propagation uh, starts however among one of its disadvantages that we introduce a new numerical method a new parameter which uh, could complicate matters i hope you you liked the tutorial see you next time